Let me ask you if you had this experience before. Maybe you're struggling getting a little bit of a slice. It doesn't have to be a huge slice. Maybe it's just barely, the ball is starting to barely leak to the right. Do you feel like when you swing really hard, even if you catch it really solid, that ball just doesn't go quite as far as what you're seeing with your competitors. You hit it right on the sweet spot, it sounds good, it feels good, but then it really just doesn't get the distance like you'd like for it to have. You probably even tried to fix coming more to the inside, swinging a little bit more inside out. We've all heard that before. You've tried it out, I almost promise you you've tried that out dozens of times. It didn't really work quite that well for you. We worked on releasing that golf club, releasing the face, turning it over. Maybe that hasn't worked as well for you either. If that sounds like you, if that sounds like the symptoms you're having, this is gonna be the perfect video for you. Now where most people focus on to fix a slice is what the club is doing itself. We want the club to swing more out to the right, we want the club to turn on over, but the part that we're missing is the part that controls the club, which is our body. Now I've got a great set of drills that I'm gonna work you guys through. We're gonna talk about some tricks on how to set up your feet, your hips, your shoulders, some things that you may not have heard before that are gonna make hitting that draw a lot easier. Let's go and get started. Now be sure to click that subscribe button. I've got tons of great content coming out this year. I don't want you to miss out on that and you have to be subscribed to get notified when we release our new videos. Also click that thumbs up, thumbs up button that really helps us out and post your comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so let's jump right in here. Now in this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna talk about one of the tools that I use on a daily basis that I would never give a lesson without and really has opened up my eyes to the science of what's happening through your golf swing really helped me to become a much better teacher. And that's my flight scope. This is their newest version of the radar. It's called the X3. And this thing is pretty daggone cool. It's an expensive piece of equipment. One of those will run you about $18,000 if you wanna buy one yourself from flight scope. Flight scope's the brand. But this is a radar that emits a radar field and it sends out something crazy like 10 million electromagnetic waves per second. And what that does is it shoots out in front of this box and it's tracking everything that's happening through this golf ball here. So whenever I go to hit a golf shot, it's bouncing those waves off this club head. It's finding which direction the club head's moving. Is it moving to the right or to the left? How fast it's going? What's the angle on the face? It's measuring the ball as it flies through the air. It actually bounces little waves off uh, the seam in the middle of the golf ball. So when a golf ball is made, it's, it has two pieces and in the middle there's a little seam. It's a little tiny bit thicker than the rest of the ball. And this radar is so precise, it tracks that to figure out how much spin is on the golf ball. It, it, it locks onto that golf ball and tracks it all the way through the air. So when it lands out there, hopefully 300 yards from here, it's gonna show exactly what that did the entire flight. So if the wind pushes it one way or another, this little machine is tracking that entire thing. So it's telling me all kinds of really good information that I can use for my teaching. In this video, we're gonna go over some of these numbers because I think they're pretty interesting. I think you guys would like to see this stuff. And then we're also gonna talk about how you can get the same general idea without any expensive equipment. You can just do it right with your eyes and be looking at how your ball's flying and knowing what to adjust at contact. So let's dive right into this. First, let's hit this bad slice, the one that falls out of the air, the one that's not getting you the distance that you wanna have. One thing that I, I look at are three pieces that this, that this is gonna help me with. Two of those are what's called face and path. So which direction is my face pointing? Is it pointing to the right or to the left at contact? This machine's gonna tell me exactly what the face is doing. Which direction is my club swinging? So am I coming over the top and swinging to the left? It's gonna tell me exactly how much it's moving to the left. And then I use this Dr. Scholl's Odor X foot spray powder. And you can get this, I get them off Amazon. There's just a few bucks for a can. And I spray this on the club face and it puts a white powder on the club face. And this is gonna show me where I contact the golf ball. That's the third piece that's gonna determine if there's a slice. Now typically, whenever you're coming over the top and you have that bad slice motion, you're gonna tend to hit a little bit more low and on the heel of the golf club. And the reason for that is, when you're coming over the top, that heel, if you look at my club here, the heel is leading the way and I tend to hit off that heel side to maximize my ability just to hit the ball at all when I have that over the top move. So that's one of the things we'll look for here in this, this video. When I make this over the top swing, do I get a little bit more contact on the heel? When I do that, this face actually twists when you hit the ball and it creates a little bit more left to right spin. So if you hit it on the heel, that's gonna make the ball spin even more. You're gonna lose even more distance. So we've talked about it about enough here. Let's go ahead and hit one. Let's do this bad move. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the wrong way. And I'm gonna go over in the rest of this video the right ways to do this, but I'm gonna start from the ground up. My right foot, is gonna be angled in a little bit. So I'm gonna take my right toe and angle it in. 
I want to take my hips and bump them back away from the target a little bit. And don't worry, I'll get into all the details of this here in a little bit. I'm going to put my right shoulder high, my right elbow out, and my right hand on top. Now, when I set up my body in this way, it's almost impossible to do anything other than hit a big, huge slice. So let's get set up in the incorrect way. I just, I can feel dead on this ball is <laughs> going to do nothing good. I'm probably going to slice the heck out of this thing. And let's hit one of my flight scope and see what numbers it spits out. All right, so that one really had a big slice on it. Now let's take a look at the contact point here. You'll see when I straight it up with this powder that the contact was low and off the heel. Now, as I mentioned, anything on the left side of the face or toward the heel side is gonna get that ball to curve even more. So that ball really started to turn from left to right. Now, when you're making that slice, what we're also gonna see is my path and my face are gonna do a certain pattern when that happens. So if I look here, my path was, this is a very extreme slice, my path was 24.7 degrees to the left. That means that the direction this club head was moving as it was coming through that ball was 24 degrees to the left. Now to give you a frame of reference, I want to be under three degrees either direction, either to the left or to the right, which would be kind of like PJ Tour caliber shots. So if I can swing and be less than three degrees or basically almost swinging dead straight, that's when you're going to really be able to transfer the most energy into the golf ball. So 24 degrees to the left, that was a big old slice there. And a lot of that had to do with how I had my body set up, which I'll get to here in a second. Now, the second piece of this, what happens is if you have a pattern of getting your body set up in a way where you're going to swing to the left, if I was to release this face and the face was to be square the direction that I'm swinging, or my face and my path were going both to the left, that ball is gonna go out of bounds over here by these houses. So it's just gonna shoot straight left and keep on going that way. So after you've done a few of these, you learn that, okay, I have to have my face a little bit open in order to get that ball to curve back to the fairway. And you'll notice here, I actually, I think I may have hit the right edge of the fairway with this swing. So it, it did perform and it went where it was supposed to go, but I lost a ton of distance, I lost swing speed and had a lot of curve on there. So I'll see my face angle was 25 degrees to the right. And what that means is I swung 24 degrees to the left and my face was pointing down the middle of the fairway or, or down the direction this, this radar is lined up. And that ball started a little left of my face and then just curved across the fairway into the right side. Now, most people might say, well, you know, Clay, that's great. Why, why can't I just play my slice? You know, I already got it going for me. It should be, can I just get as consistent with my slice as I could with a straight shot? The problem is, is this face angle. Now, if I'm swinging that much to the left, if I release the face a little too much, that's gonna be way over there to the left. My face really wants to go more to the left when that's happening. If I hold it open a little bit too much, that ball starts to really curve a ton, and it goes way over here, tons of curve and goes over into the right trees, I have to have my face just perfectly right because there's so much spin on the ball when I'm cutting across it that much to get it to land in the fairway. Your margin for error goes way, way down when we're doing this. You'll also notice it's a little tougher for me to swing fast when I'm doing that. 109 miles an hour, I'm usually up in the mid 110, you know, 115 to 120, somewhere around in there. So I lost some distance there. My carry distance was 207. That's almost 90 yards shorter than my normal carry distance would be. So I swung what I felt like was pretty hard, but because of the way my body was set up, I just could not hit the ball the way I wanted to. Now let's go ahead, let's hit another shot, and let me tweak my body positions to where we're gonna end up at the end of this video before I go through these drills, and let's see the differences that this can have. So imagine, same person, the same physical ability here, but with the incorrect motion, I'm losing about 100 yards of distance, most likely. So let's go ahead and let one rip here with my draw stance. I'm gonna tweak my foot, adjust my hips, my shoulder's gonna be slightly adjusted, my elbow and my hand, and now I'm in a position to where it's gonna be a lot easier for me to crank a big draw out there. All right, I made a couple, uh, that slice swing kinda got me out of whack. I believe that ball may have drew just a couple yards, which would be about perfect. If I can get that ball to be just turning over slightly from right to left, that's gonna be pretty good. It looked like it may have been almost dead straight. I'll hit another one in these when I give the example of the draw videos. But let's just see what that could do to the different distance. Back to my normal club head speed, 116 miles per hour on that one, pretty good. So I picked up six or seven miles an hour of club head speed by getting my body in a position where it could be more powerful and releasing that club out in front of me. My path 
went from 24 left, now it was 1.4 degrees left. Imagine a, a clock face. So you have all these minutes on a clock. One minute on a clock face is about six degrees. So we're talking a fraction of one minute. That's how accurate that you have to be in, in golf sometimes, but I'm gonna teach you how to get a little bit more accurate on this. My face was just a little tiny bit open, 2.6 to the right. Remember I said anything less than three is the golden zone. That's where we wanna be. So there I was less than three degrees of zero. And what we saw with my shot shape is that ball started almost down the dead center of the fairway. It may have had a little tiny bit of a fade on it. I've had a little bit of bad body swing in there from the first one that I did, but it's right in the middle of the fa fairway. If we get within five or six degrees, then that's when we're gonna see a moderate amount of curve. So let's say I'm swinging, let's say we don't have this radar out here and I wanna know about how much, how much I'm swinging left. The first one started left of the fairway and then curved all the way across the fairway. That's way too much. I'm more than 10 degrees left or right when I get that much curve. Let's say that I was more like five or six degrees to the left. My ball is now gonna start at the edge of the fairway and curve to the middle. So about a half of fairway's length of curve, or maybe it starts in the middle of the fairway and curves to the right. Anytime it curves, just about a half of a fairway width, that's telling you you're probably within five or six degrees of zero or centered. So even if you don't have this machine, if you just watch your ball flight, you can start to get some good feedback on which direction your club is moving and how much off center it's moving. If I'm going, you know, just five or six degrees of curve or five or six yards of curve or less, like I saw with that last shot, then I'm inside that three degrees. That's what the PJ Tour guys, PJ Tour guys are doing, which is really good. So that's all great information to know. We see how this flight scope can be so helpful. And the thing that I love about this is if you, if you ever have an opportunity to get on one, I highly recommend it because I can make an adjustment. I can make a change, what I feel like is a better swing. And then it's gonna give me immediate feedback. Was it actually better? Was what I thought was happening actually happening or was I off track? So it's really cool. Now let's go ahead. Let's talk about what we're gonna do to get that draw. So I hit one fairly straight there, but I'm not really happy with that. We wanna get that ball to turn over a good three or four yards, if not a little bit more than that. So the first trick, and when I see a lot of people go off track is the right foot. Now, when I angle my right foot in, so my right foot, you can imagine being straight forward there. When I angle my right foot in, or, or let's start with this, what you've probably typically been told when you have a slice is get your stance more to the right and swing inside out. But if I angle my right foot in, so it's straight with the camera or even a little bit toward the fairway, even if I turn my feet this way, what ends up happening is the rest of my body gets angled to the left. You can still see my hips are going left, my shoulders are going left, and my arms, my forearms are going to the left. So even though my feet are angled that way, the rest of my body is still pointing to the left and that makes it really tough to hit that draw. So what I want you guys to do is not only to put your feet a little bit to the right or line them up a little bit to the right, but I actually want you to open your right foot a little bit to help exaggerate with this. What that does is that forces my hips to get a little bit more closed. As I rotate this way, my hips rotate that way. My shoulders also tend to rotate a little bit more that way. And then my forearms tend to go a little bit more that way. So let's try this out. I'm gonna exaggerate here, get my feet to the right, open up that right foot. That's a really good trick that I found that can help you guys get that path and swing direction more out to the right. So let's give that one a whirl. There we go, nice little draw on that one. And we can see there, started down the center of the fairway, it only had a few degrees of draw on it. I'm gonna guess that was less than three or four degrees. My path was within three or four degrees of straight and my face angle was within three or four degrees of straight, just based on what that ball flight did without seeing the track or the flight scope here. So when I look at this, we saw 116 miles an hour club head speed again. Nice little draw right down the left, right center, left center fairway. That one went to 305, so I picked up a little bit of distance there. My club path was 0.7 degrees to the right. My club face was 0.7 degrees closed or to the left of my path. So that was a perfect draw swing. And the only reason it turned over a little bit more to the left is because I was very slightly off the toe here. Remember, that helps you to get a little bit of a draw. Now the next piece, I'm gonna put these next two pieces together here. So we've talked about we don't just wanna get our stance to the right. We also want to get our hips and our shoulders and our body to the right. So we got our stance to the right. We've opened up our right foot. That's gonna help. 
imagine you have the belt loop in the back of the center of the back of your pants here. What I want to do is I want to bump that toward the target and I want to get my hips a little bit more closed as this happens. So as I bump my hips to the right, that's going to close my shoulders. So if I put a club across this, we can see now my shoulders are a little bit more closed and pointed to the right. So that's the next two tips that I want you guys to focus on. Don't stop with the feet. Get the hips a little bumped toward the target and get the shoulders a little bit more to the right. Now the mistake that I see a lot of players when they try to close their hips or their shoulders, what they end up doing is they kind of close their shoulders this way or they'll close their hips a little bit but they won't close their shoulders. Or they'll tilt their shoulders right I'll kind of drop my right shoulder down, but I won't turn it to the right. What I want you to do is a little bit different than that. Take your entire hips here and turn those like you're taking the, the back belt loop of your pants and you're going to face it more toward the target. And then take your shoulders, actually have that more pointed to the right. So now I'm going to feel like my right arm is much more under the club. So everything's more to the right there. Let's see if I can get a little bit more of a draw. So I'm going to exaggerate and see if I can get that ball to turn over even a slight bit more right to left. Oh, another good one straight. So I had a little bit of an inside out path, maybe drew a tiny bit, but didn't do too much. So I just had a little bit inside out path. Hey, I'll take that all day long. Not a ton of draw, almost like a bullet dead straight, but I bet my path was a little bit to the right there like we were going for. So my path was basically dead straight, 0.8 degrees left, so almost less than a degree from zero. And my face is just a little bit open. So just right center is all that one went. So what that's telling me there, and I think is what a lot of people are struggling with when they're trying to exaggerate this, is that I'm lining up my body to the right more, but, I, but the piece I'm missing is getting that club and, and handle to turn on over. And that's what this last piece, this one, the other pieces, the feet, the hips, the shoulders, they help to give the general path to be straighter or more to the right. This last piece is what's going to guarantee that you get that draw. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right elbow and I'm going to put it more underneath. So if you imagine my elbow pointing out, if I have my elbow pointing out like this back toward the camera and not tucked under like that, that's going to put my right side of my body higher and it's going to make me want to swing across the ball in that direction. What I want to do here is I want to take my right elbow and I want to tuck it under. So my right elbow is now kind of pointing toward my right hip. Hogan talked about this a lot. That's going to really guarantee that my shoulders are to the right, and that's going to make it almost impossible for me to do anything but to swing a little bit more out to the right. I also want to feel like with that elbow in, that right elbow is lower than my left arm. If you want to really guarantee you get that draw, get that right arm under the left arm. Now I'm really getting to where I'm going to make it very easy to swing out to the right. And then here's the final piece. Maybe you've been trying to release that club head and get that face to turn on over and release the toe like you see the player, the pros doing. It, a lot of that has to do with the right hand. When I have my hand straight ahead like this, I want it to be turned under the club. So when I feel like my knuckles and my right hand, instead of having, if I struggle with a slice, instead of having those pointing directly back to the right, I want to feel like my knuckles are now pointed more down to the ground there. When I put all these together, my feet are to the right, my right foot is splayed out. That makes things a lot easier. My back belt loop is bumped toward the target. My shoulders are bumped a little to the right. My right arm is under and my knuckles are down on my right hand. This really makes it almost impossible to do anything but to deliver that club a little inside out and to get that club face to roll on over. So here I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. Let's get that hook. I've been hitting mostly straight shots or fairly straight shots. Let's get one that really turns over. And on this one, I'm going to try to get that ball to turn over a good five or 10 yards. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go. So that time I exaggerated a little bit. I saw that ball turn from right to left about a half a fairways distance. So now I know my path was probably inside out around five degrees or maybe a little bit more. Tough to know for sure without having the flight scope, but let's let it tell us here. So we'll see there, my path was 4.6 degrees to the right. Remember again, I said that ball curved about a half a fairways width. That's telling me I'm probably around that five degrees off of center. My path was 4.6 to the right. So that's exactly what we were guessing there. My club face 
was a little bit closed and releasing, it was 3.8 degrees to the left of the direction I was swinging, making that ball turn over from right to left. So those are the things that I think make golf a lot easier when we've all tried to swing more to the right, we've all tried to turn over the face and get that ball to curve, but until we get our body in a position to make that easy, it's gonna be very difficult to do. So follow those steps and make sure that you get that path moving inside out and really feel like the last tip I'll leave you with here, if you still continue to struggle with this, feel like the club face itself is gonna wrap around the outside of the golf ball. So if I have the golf ball, I wanna feel like my club face is coming to the outside of that golf ball to really close down and get that ball to really turn over from right to left. I promise you, you follow these, even if you don't have a flight scope, if you don't have the luxury of being on this machine, you're gonna get some great shots, you're gonna get some really nice draws. Now what I don't wanna do is stop right here with this body adjustment. One of the things that we talk about that's the five principles in golf. If we can nail these five things down, we can play fantastic golf our entire life. And it's what I call the stable fluid spine. Now, what I just went over in this video, getting my feet to the right, bumping those hips, getting my shoulders tilted a little bit, getting my right arm under, all these got me into a correct alignment or what we call the stable fluid spine in the golf swing. So if I took my spine angle from my belt buckle here in the front to the top of my chest, and I did those things that I just talked about, that would tilt my body away from the target until basically this club would hit the inside of my left leg and be angled back slightly. That's putting me in a position to where I can hit this, this ball down the fairway squarely time and time again. And if you wanna learn that stable fluid spine, I have one of my best bonus videos. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. Just click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that. You'll get that stable fluid spine. You can pair that up with what we learned in this video and golf gets a lot easier. I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is it that allows us to have consistency in the golf swing? And what is it that allows that consistency to fall apart and create some bad rounds? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Let's go ahead and get started. Everything that's, that happens in the golf swing is initially dictated by what happens with the spine. So if we're looking at a skeleton, you know, my spine's in the center of my body and everything else in my body is attached to my spine. So my shoulders are attached to my spine, my arms attached to my shoulders, and then my arms are gonna be actually swinging the club. Now, when I see players that are really struggling, those guys that are hitting it out in the woods right, they're hitting in the left, then they have a few good holes, what's happening is their spine angle is changing. As they go to the top of the swing, maybe they have a reverse pivot, spine's angled back, falling back to the right, but there's a lot of inconsistency in that. And what happens is, as good athletes as we all are, the number one fundamental in golf, correct, keep it nice and stable, but fluid, we're gonna be able to hit those good, clean shots time and time again. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this series of videos. Henrik Stenson, top five in both driving distance and accuracy. Roy McIlroy here, playing some of the best golf that anybody's ever played. And you can see just how stable.